Welcome into the Cowboys Report, presented today by Panda Sups, high quality vitamins and supplements. We'll tell you more about them and a giveaway that they're doing for you guys later on in the show. But before we dive into that and the Cowboys rumors, there's some news that we have to get into to kick off today's show. That is around C.D. Lamb as the Cowboys' first round pick has officially agreed to and signed his rookie contract. There were some, not going to name names, there were some out there in Cowboys media who were like, well, who knows what CeeDee Lamb is going to get? Except that really should have been very obvious because I'll let you guys in on something that apparently not everyone knows. There's a, this thing called a rookie scale for contracts, which means we already knew what CeeDee Lamb was going to get. Here are the details on his contract. It is a four-year deal worth just a little bit over $14 million per year. That's an average of about $3.5 million on at, or over the over those first four years. His signing bonus comes in $7.75 million, plus some change. There's some rounding in there, of course. It's fully guaranteed as, you know, top 20 picks are. It also includes that fifth-year team option. So this is not a huge breaking news story, but it is absolutely worth mentioning here. And now Lamb becomes the fourth of the Cowboys draft picks to sign so far. Reggie Robinson signed earlier, Bradley and I. I think actually Ben DiNucci was the first Cowboys player to sign his rookie contract. Now, look, they're all going to sign. Don't panic. This isn't going to be that big of a deal. The rookie scale for contracts, it makes it so much easier. There's not much to negotiate. They'll all be done once the players are allowed to actually start participating in camp in the next couple of days. Now, if you're like me, you're still pretty darn pumped and fired up that the Cowboys actually got C.D. Lamb and that he didn't end up on the Philadelphia Eagles. So if you are in that same mode, I want you guys to scroll down to the pinned comment on this video, and I want you to type CD. Put it there as many times as you want, but I want to fill up the entire comment section with CDs in the chat. I'm going to make that the pinned comment, so if you get the ad break here on, on YouTube, scroll down and do it right now. Let's talk about Zeke and this absolutely wild headline from fan-sided, of course. Zeke the best back in Cowboys history? Technically, yes, but you know what? No. I'm still giving it fake news. And do you know why? Because there's this dude that apparently the 12-year-old who wrote this hadn't heard of. Emmett Smith exists. Emmett Smith is a real football player, at least was a football player. He is the greatest back in NFL history as far as I'm concerned. It's so the headline of, is Zeke set to be the best? No. Zeke's pace, awesome. It's impressive. But guys, he's not going to produce at the same level and for as long as Emmett Smith did. Because I don't think anybody is really going to in the end. Look, he's awesome. This is, this is not hating on Zeke. It, it's not. If it comes off that way, my apologies. He's been great. But you've got this guy, Emmett Smith, who is the NFL's all-time leading rusher in carries, yards, and touchdowns. And he did all of that. By, even if you get rid of the Cardinals years, which they did happen, he still is the NFL's leading guy. It is a wild and unrealistic expectation to expect any player to become the greatest at his position, especially with the way the NFL is moving and becoming what they don't use backs as much, especially on the ground. So I, I, I love Zeke. Fantastic player. Let's not throw him into the he could be the greatest in Cowboys history yet because he needs like 10 years of being the NFL's leading back to actually approach those numbers. I don't think that happens. I'm sorry. Now, we mentioned today's show is brought to you by Panda Subs. They've got some awesome BCAAs. What those are, look, they're going to help you out when you work out. They're, they are a lifesaver for me because I kind of didn't work out at all during uh, the whole corona thing, and it's been kicking my butt. These are saving me. They help me recover. They help me hydrate because I get headaches pretty bad. It's not great. Help me perform better while I am working out. They are essential, and you can save 30% off at pandasups.com if you use promo code COWBOYS. They're also doing a giveaway, which stay tuned. I'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. Let's go now to Jordan Reed. How about signing him? And I don't hate this idea. I just don't think it's the best idea. I'm only going to give it the one star here. I have some interest in it. Bleacher Report listed him as a Jason Witten replacement, once again proving that Blake Jarwin gets no respect from national media. 
even though the Cowboys already paid him as the Jason Witten replacement and as a starter. Now look, Jordan Reed, when healthy, he's pretty good. His 2016 year was awesome. 2018 wasn't that bad either. But that's the big problem, right? Jordan Reed, he's not healthy. He's always hurt. He is always banged up. That's a problem. I cannot trust him to stay healthy. He's had so many concussions, I'm not even convinced the Cowboys team doctors would clear him to play. That's how bad it is. And he'd be a backup. And I, look, I'd feel better if Blake Jarwin went down for whatever reason, if there was an injury there, if I'd have Jordan Reed. But then I'd be terrified that Jordan Reed's going to last like two snaps before he also ends up getting hurt. So I, 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 am, I am a fan of Jordan Reed. But because of the injury problems, because I have Blake Jarwin, I don't think it's the most logical or, more, or more, most likely outcome in the end for Dallas. One-year deal, no, little to no guaranteed money. I'll explore it, but I just because of those concussions, because of the medical problems, I don't think it's a good idea for Dallas. And frankly, I don't think it's a good idea for Jordan Reed. So I'm sure some of you will type in yes here today for this question. If Should the Cowboys sign Jordan Reed? Why for yes and for no? But I'm going to type in my no. If you want a tight end, how about Delaney Walker instead? Veteran injury problems, but he is a little bit more likely to help out on that front. All right, folks, here is the giveaway we're doing with our friends over at Panda Subs. If they can reach 700 Instagram followers at Panda Subs, check the comments, check the descriptions. We'll put the Instagram handle in there for you guys. They will give away three of their new Tropics packages. Now, this is a better version than your coffee or that soda or that Red Bull. It'll help keep you energized and focused at work or at school or whatever. If they reach 700 only, though, by end of day Friday, that is the deal. They are only 50, they're less, actually, less than 50 away. I think you guys can do it. They're, it's free to follow them on Instagram. They'll pick the winners, so you got to get them to 700 by end of day Friday. And if, just to make your lives easier, at Panda Suffs, check the description, check the comments. That link is in there. Over now to some undrafted free agents. Are they going to make the roster for the Dallas Cowboys? In most years, this is this probably would have been three or four. I'm only going to put it at two, though. I think there's a good chance one of them does, but this is going to be very different because there is no preseason. Training camp is going to be very different than what these players just There was no rookie minicamp or OTAs in the way that it normally happens. Now, ESPN's Todd Archer he put out his 53-man uh, roster projection. He had three of them making the roster. Now, to me, that screams, hey, these are the guys to pay attention to in camp. He has Darius Anderson out of, out of TCU, Stephen Guidry out of Rhode Island, Francis Bernard out of Utah. I would venture to say Todd's heard good word from, from some coaches and front office guys on those particular players. Now, R53 slash 55, it's weird, it's explained in this video, didn't have those guys making the roster, at least not all of them. We will update this closer to the actual start of the season, but if you want to see what I put together, well, go check it out. It's on the channel, and once again, I'll put it in the comments and in the description to make your lives a little bit easier. But I think there's a chance at least one of those UDFAs ends up making it this year. Let's look ahead now to the 2021 NFL Draft. Drafting a quarterback. In general, too early to decide, but it is a possibility. I'm going to give it two stars right now. Bucky Brooks, who works for NFL Network and also does some stuff for the Cowboys website, called the quarterback class outstanding. Wrong. <laughs> it is great at the top. The big three guys who we'll get to in just a second, they're really good. The rest of them... I, I, they, they got to have a lot better season. I, the, the, the Brock Purdy's of the world, the, the, the Kyle Trask's, the, the Tanner Morgan's, and eh, it's not, it's not really ideal on that front whatsoever. The big three: Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Trey Lance. They're all probably going to be top ten, top fifteen picks, which is fine if you can get one of those guys. That's, that's not that bad. They're, they're very good athletes. They, they can run. They've had success this past couple of years. Problem is, especially with Trevor Lawrence, you're not getting them. Can we make that clear? If you're drafting at, you know, let's say pick 25, if things go average to above average based on our expectations, you're not going to get Lawrence. You're not going to get Fields. You're probably not going to get Trey Lance. So 
sure, I don't mind going after one of those quarterbacks if, if I'm in range for them and certainly scout and watch them and try to acquire them if you're not going to pay Dak long term. But the problem is, A, you have a tough time getting them, and then B, you're hoping those guys become a top 10 quarterback like the guy you already have. I'd love to get Lawrence. I did that in a heartbeat. I think he's going to be there. Justin Fields, sure. Trey Lance, I hope he can become a Dak Prescott caliber guy. So get your votes for me in the comments section. If you could pick one of them, who would it be? I'd probably honestly take Trevor Lawrence. I know he hasn't been proven yet, but I think he's going to be an awesome NFL quarterback. So I'm, I'm, I'd probably type in my two first, but I'm not going to get it. So I, I think from a realistic standpoint, it almost comes down to one or four, Dak Prescott or Trey Lance. And in that scenario, probably going to take Dak Prescott instead. But cast your votes for me in the comments. One for Dak, two for Trevor Lawrence, three for Justin Fields, or four for Trey Lance. Let's talk defense now. The linebackers. The Cowboys have the number two linebacker unit in the NFL. I just, I don't see it right now. Now, if you had asked me this last year, I might have given it only three stars. I thought they should have, been, should have been number one. Oops on my front because they weren't very good last year. And that's why I can't put them at number two. Upside-wise, sure, it's possible. If Jalen Smith bounces back, if LVE stays healthy, love the depth with, with guys like Sean Lee and even Joe Thomas in there. But there are too many other linebacking units. And by the way, this is off-ball linebackers, so not edge rushers. So... For example, for the Bucks, Shaquille Barrett does not count there. This is not the, the Vaughn Miller linebackers. These are guys that don't rush the passer. Seattle's right to be number one. I honestly would take the Bucks over the Cowboys. I'm surprised Houston's up there. I'd take maybe the Colts, the Vikings, and 49ers. I'd take them over Dallas, too. So, again, I, I like the upside. I, I still have some faith in Jalen Smith and, and, for, and Leighton Vander Esch. But looking forward long term, they have to prove it to me. I can't justify listing them as the second best linebacking core in the NFL because that's not what we saw last year. Jalen Smith wasn't close to the same guy, struggled in coverage. Sure, he made tackles to make up for Leighton Van Der Esch missing so many and missing time with his injury, but Smith wasn't nearly as impactful. Leighton Van Der Esch, maybe it was the neck injury. You can chalk it up to that, but you're concerned about the neck injury long term. So I, I, I have some belief, some hope, if you will, in Jalen Smith and Van Der Esch and Sean Lee, who I will always love, but I don't think this is the number two off-ball linebacker unit in the NFL. Top 10, sure. Top two, no, I can't get on board with that one. Hey, Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.